Can't live with them, can't live without them. What's going on guys? Welcome back to episode number two of The Science of Healthy Eating. Carbs. They're in almost everything. You love them, I love them, certain kinds of ants love them, but I won't talk about ants because that would be weird. Right? Oftentimes people have more of a love-hate relationship with carbs than they do with their ex-girlfriend or boyfriend. But we all know fear leads to hate, hate leads to anger, anger leads to... So let's take care of that fear with a little bit of knowledge dropping. So what is a carb? Well, a carb is one of the three macronutrients we have in the world in which we live, the other two being fats and proteins. And you can find carbs in just about everything from milk to sugar to bananas, to fruits, to vegetables, oats, pasta, bread, you name it. Even that favorite dessert you like to eat while you're watching Netflix. Looking at you. Now when you look on the back of something like a nutrition label, you may notice that they break carbs down into sugar and fibers. What's up with that? Now I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I feel like there's four different sides of you. When we talk sugar, there's actually four different kinds of simple sugars we can find within foods. Now they all differ in molecular structure and varying degrees of sweetness, but in the end, they're all yummy in our tummy. Let's start with the one that we all know best, the very thing that makes sweet tooth so well acquainted with their dentist, <coughs> table sugar. Now sucrose is found in almost everything sweet in nature, but when you consume it, it gets broken down into two other simple sugars, fructose or glucose. Now fructose is something that you might be pretty familiar with, and of course it's found in fruits and vegetables. And you might be even more familiar with it in the form of high fructose corn syrup, found in drinks like Fruitopia and like various kinds of pop. Did you know huh? that the metabolism of fructose is actually dependent on your liver, which is why things such as excessive alcohol consumption may lead to more weight gain. We also have another simple sugar in the form of galactose, which is found in things like dairy products like milk. Hence the phrase lactose intolerant. And lastly, we have glucose, which is probably the most important simple sugar for your body. Because when you ingest glucose, it's absorbed almost immediately. And it's the primary source of fuel for your brain and your white blood cells. Next, we have complex carbs. And those are the things you find in breads, pastas, potatoes, starchy foods. And these take longer to digest, which is why you might feel fuller for a longer period of time when you eat them. And it's also why they feel so much heavier and you kind of want to fall asleep after eating them in abundance. Now regardless of how you're attaining your sugars or your carbs, the first thing that they're going to become in your body is glycogen. Glycogen is the stored form of this essentially energy from the carbs and sugars in your muscle. It's a complex sugar itself found in the tissues of uh, animals and human beings. Basically they provide an immediate source of energy for your muscles to use should you need to jump into action. Let's say you're walking through the woods and all of a sudden there's a 600 pound grizzly bear just wanting to eat you for some reason. How do you get that energy? You don't have time or you don't have half an hour to wait for your body to start metabolizing fat. You need to use your glycogen and that's going to make you able to run away hopefully. Same thing goes for your workout. When you're working out, particularly with long distance running, resistance training, things of that nature, you're actually depleting your body's glycogen stores, which is why it's perfectly okay to have some carbs post-workout. You actually need it. On a side note, what some people have confused is they have the whole concept of, oh, I'm going to carb load, go to the gym, and now I'm going to do like 600 reps and lift you know, 600 pounds. I don't know why I keep using the number 600 today. Basically, they think that they become stronger all of a sudden. And while there is some truth to this, to some extent, what's actually happening is you've just crammed in a whole bunch of glycogen into your muscles and now you're all puffed up and ready to go. You have more immediate energy stores to keep you going longer and harder and longer in your workout. Technically, now we have an understanding of what a carb is. But how does it factor into nutrition? Well, to put it simply, a carb is about three calories per gram. That is to say, if I ate something that was 12 grams in carbs, I would get 36 calories from those 12 grams in carbs. So let's get back to that nutrition label again. What's up with the fiber content? Well, to put it simply, aside from helping you go to the washroom and maybe offsetting some of that cholesterol, fiber is a good way of also offsetting the amount of sugar in something that you want to eat that has carbs in it. The higher the ratio of fiber to sugar, the better. So let's say you pull up a nutrition label and you have something that says, oh, it has three grams of fiber and it has one gram of sugar. That's a three to one ratio. That's pretty decent. What you want to aim for, if not 3 to 1, is 4 to 1, or even better, 5 to 1. If you're already doing a 5 to 1 ratio with fiber to sugar in your carbs, hey, you're awesome. 
So just as a quick analogy, let's take this box of fiber one cereal. Now let's take this label from a box of Fruit Loops. Can you see the difference in the amount of sugar and fiber that are in each cereal? Okay, so what's the best way to eat these things? Well, remember, at the end of the day, carbs give you a form of energy. You're gonna digest them, your body's gonna use that energy. And if you don't have a need for all that energy, it's gonna get stored somewhere as probably fat. So the first step for you to do is determine how active you are during the day. Are you going to do an intense workout later? A lot of yard work to do? Are you a shopaholic? Things like that. The quicker you realize your body's energy needs, easier eating just gets. But just as a rough, generic sort of estimate, let's say that an average diet, you should probably get 35 to 50% of your calories from carbohydrates. My recommendation would be to stick to your more complex carbohydrates earlier on in the day. So for breakfast, you'd have things like oatmeal, protein pancakes, cereal's okay, just make sure that sugar isn't one of the top three ingredients. You also want to avoid eating lots of carbs later on in the day when you don't really need it. So. If you're eating a huge plate of rice with whatever you're having for dinner when you get home, probably lay off that a little bit. Same thing goes for pizza and all that. Unless you plan on having an intense workout at some point after that, or you are trying to gain weight, but throughout the day you can have simple carbs like fruits, veggies with a ton of fiber in them, like celery, apples, you name it. These things will help stabilize your appetite. Baby spinach is also a great substitute for things like rice and pasta. You know, form the simple switches. Instead of milk, have some almond milk or cashew milk. You'll find that if you manage to establish a routine of when you're eating your carbs each day, your body will get better at metabolizing these carbs. It'll just get that much easier to stay lean or maintain your current physique. But let's say you slurred and had a carb heavy meal before bed. It's not the end of the world. Stop the apocalypse sirens. It's all right. What you can do is just cycle them off a little bit the next day. Don't have your usual amount of carbs. It's okay to have a cheat meal. Just don't do it every night like I do. This is what we call carb cycling. All right, so why not just cut carbs out completely? Well, because you need them. If you don't have carbs, then your brain and your white blood cells wouldn't function properly. You'd start to feel sluggish. You wouldn't be able to think as quick. Your immune system would slowly start degrading in its efficiency. You notice you probably get sick more often. And eventually your body will go into something called ketosis, where it's going to be trying to metabolize your fat stores as its main source of energy. But as we just said, your brain and your white blood cells, just for example, need glucose as their primary source of fuel. So that was my little lecture for you guys on carbs on the second episode of the Science of Healthy Eating. I hope you guys took something away from it. And let me know what questions you have in the comment section below. As always, if you haven't, please leave a like and please subscribe for more awesome content. Check you guys out on the next episode of the science of healthy eating.